Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Arise with Amber. I'm your host, Amber. If you are new here, you have found my tiny little corner of the internet, and I welcome you with open arms. I am a wife. I'm a mother. I am a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. Most of all, I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I have created these Arise episodes to share the hope and the love that we have in Jesus, as well as to hopefully just be an encouragement to you in this thing called life. And just to let you know that this life is hard, but God is so, so good. And that no matter what comes your way, you can arise. And I love that we we serve a God who is so personal that he sovereignly ordains and orchestrates every single detail of our lives. And that includes you being here right now, clicking on this podcast and having you here, right here in this moment. I love that we serve a God who is so intentional. So thank you for being here. I hope that something I say sparks something in you to make you want to know the Lord. And if you already do know the Lord, just to make you want to grow deeper in abiding in Him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for the gift of another day. Lord, I thank you that we have the ability to have this platform to share the good news that we have in you, Lord. I pray for somebody to hear a word from you, God. If they are far from you, Lord, draw them in. Lord, if they are new here, Lord, I pray that something I say will prick their heart and make them bleed repentance and make them turn to you, God. We thank you that you are our sovereign ruler. You are Lord God Almighty. And I just pray that We live our lives knowing this and living this way every day. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I was praying this week about what to talk about. I pray all about my arises and what I should write about and talk about. And so I I pour over scriptures and I I listen to sermons and uh, I pray so much. And it can be a little bit of pressure to to want to come up with something encouraging for you guys and and be a voice of truth and hope and honesty and sometimes i feel that i pray and i think and i read and i write all week and i have nothing and other times it just kind of flows freely well this week i was struggling a little bit i'm kind of late getting this to my editor actually um but the Lord always provides. And I was praying before bed the other night, and I was praying about the fear of the Lord. And I wrote down four things before I went to bed. I prayed, Lord, guide me. Lord, guide me. Uh, let me know what, what you would have me say. Not my voice, but yours. Lord, Lord, lead me in the way of everlasting. And then I went to sleep. And the four things that I wrote down were the fear of the Lord, beginning of wisdom, audience of one, And then I wrote down a psalm. And so I woke up again in the morning after I went to bed. I wrote those four things down, woke up in the morning, and I always pray before I get out of bed. I always pray before my feet hit the floor because I want the Lord to be the first person that I speak to before I I even hit, hit my feet on the floor, before I even open up my phone, before I even see my husband or my kids. I want the first person that I speak to to be the Lord. So I was praying, and I just said, God, you're my guide. You are my guide. Lord, lead me. Lead me as again as to what you would have me say. And I woke up to a text from a sweet friend of mine, and she had texted me at 4.50 in the morning. And it said, thanking God for you, I truly admire your fear of the Lord. And again, thank you for all you do for so many. And she sent a prayer with that, and it said, God, today I'm thinking of a very important woman in my life. Protect her and guide her. Fill her with your strength and your hope. I pray she finds confidence in you, not the physical beauty standard of the world, which is another thing I was praying about. Give her wisdom and a heart for you in Jesus' name. And I don't know why I am always still so in awe of God's timing because it's always perfect, but I am. I I still am in awe every time I see or feel God move. I was just praying about the fear of the Lord. And then I get this text about how... She's saying she truly admires my fear of the Lord. So it was just confirmation. Okay, this is what I need to speak about this week. And I love that he gives us confirmation when we, we come to him and humble ourselves 
and truly draw near. His word says that he sees us, he inclines his ear to us, and he definitely provides. So let me just say, after 41 years on this earth, I know where my place is in this world. I know where I belong, and that is at the feet of Jesus. And this life is not about me. It is about a much bigger purpose. It is about a kingdom purpose. And this knowledge and this wisdom has come from me having a reverent fear of the Lord and in truly seeking and knowing who he is. It's taken many years to come to this. Like I said, I'm 41. I I opened my Bible and read it for the first time at 38. So it's taken me many years to get here. But once it's revealed to you, once you see You live your life differently. You have an eternal gaze. So what is this fear of the Lord? I want to challenge you to ask yourself this week, ask the Lord to search you, ask the Lord to search your heart and see, do you truly have a fear of the Lord? Do you truly know the God of the Bible? And there are a few ways that we can fear the Lord. And this fear is or should be for the unbeliever different. We should fear or they should fear as an unbeliever, his wrath. His wrath should be feared. He is judge. The Lord hates sin and he is angry against sin and against rebellion and against people in society who mock him and who who think that his ways are foolish. People in society don't truly see or believe who he is. Or they would live their lives much, much differently. They don't, they don't truly have a fear of the wrath and the rebellion that they are acting out in against him. And many people in society, they make God out to be who they want him to be. They want to paint this picture of who they think he is, and it is not the God of Scripture. I spoke of, I spoke of God's wrath in a recent episode, and someone commented, God's wrath? Question mark. Is that even possible? Yes, this is what is scary about not having wisdom from our Lord and about not opening up our Bibles and about this cultural Christianity that so many people are stuck in, that I was stuck in at one point, thinking that I knew this Lord that I didn't truly know. And people have created this bubblegum version of God, of who they think he is, and they haven't even opened up their word People don't know the God of Scripture. And like I said, in their defense, I didn't open up my word till I was 38, so I was blind too. But now that I do know, I want to just shake people. I want to just shake them and say, wake up. You know, since the fall, we are on a fast track to hell, a fast track to hell until God opens up our eyes. And so it is our duty to share the truth of God's word and of who God is, the triune God of Scripture. People say that God is love and God loves everyone and God accepts us all. We are all saved. Jesus died for everyone. So we're all going to get to heaven and we may just take different roads to get there. You know, there are many ways to heaven. God just wants us all to be happy, but God paints a very different picture in scripture. There is one way. There is one narrow path and scripture is clear. Yes, God is love. Yes, he accepts you as you are, but you are not to stay there. He is holy, he is just, he is righteous, and he will not be mocked. He is not your homeboy, he is not the big man upstairs, he is not a genie on a cloud, he is Yahweh, Lord of Lords, Lord Jesus Almighty, King of Kings. He is our Messiah, he is the Alpha and the the Omega, he is the Great I Am, and he is coming back in an all-consuming fire to judge the entire earth. We will all stand before him and every knee will bow. Do you know him in this way? Do you have a reverent fear of him in this way? Or is he going to say to you, as he does in Matthew 7, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. Now for the believer, for the true believer of our Lord, the fear of the Lord is different. Yes, we, we can fear his wrath because we know, we, we have read and seen his wrath all throughout scripture, but we don't have to because Jesus took it for us. For those in Christ, Jesus served as the substitute for the wrath that should be poured out onto us. Jesus took it all on the cross. 
So we have a fear and we have a reverence of who we have come to know him to be. And this fear leaves us in awe of him. Like I said, I still sit in awe of him all the time. We come to realize our own depravity and of how truly small we are. We are but dust. And this life is but a vapor. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. He is our Holy Father, and we are his servants. He is the creator of the universe. He is, he is infinitely different in holiness and righteousness than we are. He is the triune God who spoke the earth into existence. He created man out of the dust, and he breathed life into him. He came in the flesh, and he died for you and for me, and he was resurrected again. And every single thing is from him, through him, and to him. And nothing is done outside of his sovereign control. Men fall on their faces all throughout scripture because they can't look into his glory. And we puff ourselves up so much, you know, in our, in our little kingdom here on earth. And, and we, make our, we make people think that, that life revolves around us. And in reality, we're just dust. It doesn't revolve around you. It is not about you. It is about a much bigger purpose. And fearing the Lord, coming to know the fear of the Lord as a believer, comes with having humility, comes with having a sincere and believing heart that He is God. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. And you are not. We are not. Many times people say, you know, well, I'm going to ask God about this when I get to heaven, or I'm going to have a word with the Lord whenever I get there, and I'm going to ask Him. And I'm sure I've said that too. But no, you're not. No, you're not. You're going to fall on your face and worship for his almighty holiness. You will approach him with fear and trembling. You are not going to come and scold the Lord. Just going to say that right now. You will fall on your face in front of him in reverent fear and worship of his holiness and his goodness and his love for you. He says to Job, where were you, O man, when I laid the foundations of the earth? I can picture us coming up, up to him with questions and him just responding in that way, just as he did to Job. Where were you? Where were you when I laid the foundations? Tell me if you know. The Bible says in Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And in Romans 1, 21 and 22, it says, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. There are so many very, very, very smart people on this earth who that is a gift from God, but they don't have wisdom. They might have knowledge, but they don't have a wisdom. Knowledge knows of God. Wisdom reveres him, follows him, loves him, obeys him. Knowledge knows of Jesus. They might know the stories of Jesus. Wisdom knows we are nothing apart from him. We can do nothing apart from the Lord. And we can do nothing to deserve what he did for us. We don't deserve what he did for us on the cross. And we don't get to heaven by anything that we have done. We get to heaven by everything that he did for us. Psalm 111.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Fearing the Lord is meant to make us wise, and it leads us into salvation in Jesus. It transforms us by the process of sanctification, and it leads us away from the snares of this world and death. Proverbs 14.27, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. The Bible says, blessed is the one who finds wisdom. And that's Proverbs 3.13. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. If you are a Christ follower, if your eyes have been opened, if you have been transformed, if you are a new creation, count yourself blessed. Count yourself blessed and live in that reverent fear of God that he has saved you. He has saved you. And by Christ, we have wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. 
He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Coming to Christ is our wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. It is the beginning of knowledge. This goes for everyone, but specifically Proverbs is all about wisdom. So if you guys want to read about wisdom, dig into Proverbs. Proverbs 31.30, this speaks of women specifically. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Are we a people who fear the Lord? Do we live our lives according to the Spirit? Do we walk Do we walk by the Spirit with this fear of who He is out of a love and an obedience to follow Him and serve Him? How sure are you that you would enter heaven if He came back today? Jonathan Pecluda says, on a scale of 1 to 10, when he's evangelizing, he'll ask people, on a scale of 1 to 10, how sure are you that you will enter heaven? I just want you to think about that. Think about that number. Because if it's any other number than 10, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, then there's a problem. You're not getting in on a 7 or a 6 because you're a good person and you go to church and, and you're kind to people. That's not going to get you there. It's nothing that you have done. It is all by what he has done. It is all by what he has done. And if God says to you, why, do I, why should I let you in? Why should I let you in? What have you done with this life that I've given you? Why should I let you in? The only correct answer is, it is not by anything that I have done. It is by the sacrifice of your son who shed his blood for me. And, it, and I, I have put my faith in Jesus. And other than that, that's the only reason I'm saved. I'm saved by grace through faith. It is by his doing, not by my own. Those who know the true God, the true triune God of scripture, delight to fear his name. When we fear the Lord, when we delight to fear the Lord, we can serve him well. We seek to do his will. So many people will say, you know, what is my purpose on earth? I'm searching for my purpose. I don't know what my purpose is. What is God's will for my life? Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. We are to love and fear God and keep his commandments. Because in keeping his commandments, we will do everything else. We will, we will love one another. We will share the message of the gospel. He will reveal his will for your life when you are abiding in him. When you love him and fear him and keep his commandments, he will make your path straight. And God blesses those who fear his name. Luke one fifty says, His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Psalm 103.11 for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. God loves those who fear him. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. And that's Psalm 85, 9. The right, loving, reverent fear of our God should cause us to fall on our knees in humble surrender and humility, and worship. And it's there, in that right heart posture, free from pride, that we are in the right place to gain the wisdom from above. In James 3, it says, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed. I am not the most book smart person. I didn't make, you know, the best grades. I, I don't like to say that I know a lot because <laughs> I don't. But I know who I serve. And I know my place in this world. And Psalm 29, 2 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory 
do his name. Worship the Lord in splendor of holiness. I know who God is. I know the God of scripture. And I live in reverent fear and love and obedience and worship and surrender and gratitude and and love. I think I already said love. In love for him. Every day. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. But I draw near to the feet of Jesus because I know he is the giver of life. He is our savior. He is the giver of wisdom and knowledge. And when we have that fear, when we are humbled, that's, that puts us in the position where, where God can do his best work in us, where God can use us for his kingdom. I want you guys to draw near to the throne of grace this week and, and open up your word. Open up your word if you don't know him. If you don't know him, cry out to him to open your eyes, to, to usher in his presence into your life, to transform you, to save you from whatever sin you're struggling with. And if you do know him, keep reading, keep abiding, keep seeking that wisdom and knowledge because the joy and the discovery that comes from this search it gives us wisdom. It gives us strength and it gives us relationship and it gives us purpose. You are chosen. I appreciate you guys so much for being here, for listening from wherever you're coming from. Thank you guys for joining me. If you guys want to send me a message, you can go to my website, arisewithamber.com, or you can send me an email at arisewithamber at gmail.com. My Instagram is at Amber Emily Smith. I think that's it. I think that's all the places you can find me. But anyway, send me a message, send me a question. If you have anything that you would like me to pray over for you, I'm happy to do that. I love you guys. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for supporting this, this tiny little ministry that, that I just want to share the good news of the gospel. And I want to share what God has done and what God is doing and who he truly is. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.